My name is John Chamberlain. Um, basically what I've been doing for the last 20 years is producing juvenile sea urchins, trying to produce them, and finally getting to the stage where now we are producing enough that we can reintroduce into the wild and into our own farmed areas so that we can make a living from it in the future because the urchins are virtually wiped out now due to overfishing in the last number of years. It was an enormous industry. Uh, they came from all over the country to collect them. They had boats that they would drop off with divers in the boats, boatmen, lorries coming around from pier to pier to collect them up. And they drove away with cattle lorries stacked to the top with baskets and baskets of sea urchins, night after night after night. We have a good area, clean water, cold water, which is suitable for growing of kelp, and the kelp suits the animal, and that gives us this fabulous taste, and that's why we're looking. I worked up there in electronics for over 25 years, and every day I was looking down in this sea. I'm watching the fishermen going out, and I didn't know whether they're making big money or small money. I was just so jealous of these beautiful boats outside there, and doing a job that I'd love to be doing, and finally I decided, well, okay, uh, it's time to pack this up and uh, the government gave me a little bit of money to, to say goodbye to them. I said they were as glad to see me go as I was to see them go and I used it to start up my business with my daughter because at this stage the sea urchins were pretty well wiped out and uh, we decided, at least she suggested and was right, we should make a hatchery and make our own urchins and re-establish urchins in areas where they were before. They face a lot of problems growing up because first of all they're in the plankton chain that moves up and moves down in day and night and every other living organism in the sea will eat them when they're that size. And the few that survive from that, you see, by the way, that's why the female has up to four, five or even six million eggs because if she didn't, the chances of the population surviving is virtually non-existent. But even when they do settle into the little rock pools, they'd be the best of the best and the f survival of the fittest and the luckiest. Every little crab, shrimp, and lobster, of course, eats them then. Because once the, lob, once the crab can get his claws around him and crack him, he'll make a feed of them. That's their natural predators in places like this, little, little pools like this, where they'll get protected areas where shore crabs and velvet crabs can live, and they, they'll make a feast out of the baby urchins. When they get bigger to full size and they have a nice piece of meat, for want of the better word, inside them, then otters become a predator also. Not so much in this country because we've managed to wipe out most of our otters, unfortunately, but in, in Canadian countries and countries where otters are plentiful, yes, they are a hazard to the adult sea urchin. At the moment, it's the, the English market is our main market because we don't have enough to go to France anymore. We will in a couple of years' time, but we have enough to satisfy one or two good customers in England, and it's beginning to build up as very popular over there. It's beginning to build up as popular in this country too, but f so slow that it's, it's, it's a fad in this country. It's pretty well established in England and very well established all over the continent. I'm just going to open this one, uh, try and expose and hope we've got some nice little bit of meat inside it and we'll see how it goes. In the industry, in Japan and in Chile, when they're in a the factory situation, they use this type. And it goes into the animal, you squeeze it, animal pops open and they will go do, 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 like that on an assembly line and the assembly line is going past them. On the continent, they use this one. Some people refer to it as a pobbit. I wonder why. You just put it in there and you squeeze the, I don't know, you want to be very strong for this in my opinion. And I'm probably not strong enough to do it, so. You take the top off and expose the animal. We'll try to open this now with the scissors. And it's just like opening an egg. Be careful of your hands because there are spines. And I just take this meat from here and I have to wash it and all the rest of it for you. Of course you wouldn't wash it but we're down the shore you can see it the way it is. All these little pieces of residue are actually seaweed, compressed seaweed, where the animal has chewed his various food and just that's it's going through his system. And it comes out like that in the end, almost untouched, but just takes it the necessary nutrients from it that he wants. And what's left then is good for all the other creatures around them that they can be eating. Overall, it is working. It is working and very, very slowly it'll get back to the stage, hopefully, that it was one time. But it took millions of years to put it to the stage that it was at one time. It took man 10 years to wipe it out. So maybe that means man is quicker than nature. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get it back.